I wonder of the stories these three bells would relate if they could tell of all they've seen up to the present date. A proud proclaim of faith, of hope, and charity through ten decades of years would be the first of many tales to fall on listening ears. First placed, but not for long, in solid, staunch oak tree, our bells began their service to the parish of St. Anthony, St. Anthony Parish began in 1858 when 40 families contributed about $100 each to begin construction of a church. Located on the current site of Golf Gym, it was the first church in Effingham. On Christmas Day, 1858, the first Mass was read in the new church by Father Capistran Zwingi. The current church construction was completed in 1875 and has undergone several renovations since then. However, in 1874, before the exterior of the new church was completed, a severe windstorm blew one of the pinnacles off the north side of the tower. It was less expensive at the time to remove the other north pinnacle than to replace the damaged one. The latest renovation began in October 1996. The wallpaper and paneling were removed and the inside entirely repainted. The Blessed Sacrament Chapel was now located behind the main Reredos with doors to be kept closed during Mass. The church statues and Stations of the Cross were completely restored and repainted. The cry rooms were located by the south entrances and the seating for the disabled were located in the front pews. The front outside lights were rewired, repainted, and the glass replaced. The symbolic opening of the renovated church took place on the Feast of St. Anthony, June 13, 1997. In 1911, the original church windows were replaced with stained glass windows. The two windows nearest the sanctuary are memorials to former pastors Father Weiss and Father Jungmann. The others were donated. The position of each was drawn by a lot.
is a very important year for St. Anthony Church, schools, and parish. We're celebrating our 150th year as a, as a parish. And one of the striking features, I think, of our parish is whenever you enter into Effingham, all you have to do is look at the skyline. And what you find is, is our um, steeple. And on top of that steeple is that beautiful cross. And it's sort of a beacon. It's a beacon of hope for um, the community. It's a beacon of hope for the parish. And it seems to attract. It attracts people who want to come and celebrate and worship with us. It attracts people to come to our schools. And it attracts our parishioners to, to celebrate together as a community. Um, We're very privileged to have that beacon. And I think from all the changes that have occurred in the last 150 years, the one thing that still continues to exist in our community is, is that beacon of hope, which is our, our steeple and the cross on that steeple. There are so many th changes that have happened over the years, and it is from the parish taking ownership, taking stewardship, that all of these things have become a reality. And so we're very, anything that celebrates us as a parish is celebrating each and every individual as a parishioner who, who has taken that ownership and continues to take pride in this parish, continues to be an active member in this parish. One of the other things I'd like to say too is that um, that steeple that I've been talking about is, is truly a beacon of hope. And that's why we have our school system. That's why we put so much emphasis on education of our young people because they are the hope for the church and for the community. And when we look around the community as that, be as that steeple is, a tr is that beacon of hope for others, I think of all the influences that our young people as well as our graduates have had on this community, both in education, as well as in commerce, as well as in um, science, all of those areas, and as well as the church itself. And it is because of all of that 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 beacon of hope, that, that's, that steeple, continues to be that attractive element for all of us.
Probably the latest was the addition of the parish center, which was very sorely needed. Uh, the church has been remodeled twice since I've been a member uh, and has uh, been made more comfortable and more accessible, uh, especially for the handicapped and for the impaired. And welcome to this special day, the groundbreaking of St. Anthony Grade School. For those of you who might not know me, I'm Mrs. Byers. I am the principal, and it is my privilege today to 
BDMC. About a year and a half ago when Father Leo walked into my office and told me this magnificent news, I sat there just in amazement. Never in my wildest dreams could I have dreamt that this would be possible. And it's just such a wonderful thing. Most of us remember where we were when certain events happened, like 9-11 or something. Well, I certainly remember that day when Father Leo came into my office to tell me this news. I would, there is a saying that a dream, or excuse me, a goal is nothing more than a dream put in writing. And we definitely have it down in our blueprints. We're ready to go, ready to make this dream come true. On behalf of all the students and staff at St. Anthony Grade School, I would like to thank those anonymous donors, whoever they are, for this wonderful, wonderful gift that they have given us. my thoughts for the parish now. I think this is a great year, the sesquicentennial. And when I think of the rich tradition and the strong shoulders that we're standing on today, um, I just want us to continue to move into the future and to make our church and our parish um, the greatest parish in the diocese. The bells keep ringing, time continues to pass, while each and every Sunday, people fill the church for Mass. The bells have seen children, once young, now grown old. Children of their own they have, the bells watch as the stories unfold. Those who attend this great parish find immense joy in the learning. Devout faith is the norm here, our love for God a deep fire burning. Passed on the faith is to the next generation. A new song is heard, this of joy and celebration. One bell of steel, two of iron, placed in a tower rising to the sky, toll at eight, twelve, and six, compelling onlookers to gaze up high. But if pain can do them justice, and words even more, the happiness of each ring rang in each heart's very core. Time goes by and people change, but our special parish will remain the same.